Hello and welcome to Pendant and Ring. Do you know we have a website? It's pendantandring.com. So on days when you want to look at some pictures, maybe read some words, you can go check it out. I write articles for the website, and this is a transcript of our most recent article. Rock Cutting, an Incomplete History. When I set out to write this jewelry article about gemstones, I expected a straightforward research and writing process. That is not what happened. Craftsmanship histories are typically well documented as they require a great deal of trial and error to find out what works for a task at hand and all the things that do not work. Sometimes, however, time gets in the way and answers get fuzzy. In the far reaches of history, we find the Stone Age, wherein all tools are made of natural fibers and natural objects like coral, shells, and stones. To cut a stone, opal, or pearl, or limestone, or sandstone, the craftsperson needs a harder tool than the stone which is to be cut. Some stones are harder than Stone Age tools. Take, for example, quartz, which is harder than a standard steel nail. Stone Age makers could not use their Stone Age tools to cut quartz, nor could the architects in Egypt use steel materials to cut granite stones, nor could the Bolivian architects use steel to cut the blocks for Puma Punku. Yet somehow, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Bolivians, and ancient jewelry makers the world over cut quartz, granite, and other harder stones. The loudest theory regarding the technology used to cut harder stones has been shared by the History Channel. Another less publicized theory that sounds as likely as aliens at first blush is that the ancient stonemasons and jewelers used magic sauce to dig, carve, engrave, cut, and shape stones. There are a few sources that date to the Stone Age, yet at least two proficient stone tooling ancient societies with vibrant oral traditions have been studied and documented at length. Both societies reference a magic stone-cutting liquid. An ancient South American tradition calls the magic liquid pito, and an ancient Middle East tradition calls it shamir. Pito and shamir are both fluids with similar special storage requirements. Both were considered dangerous gifts from the gods, and both liquids melt hard stones. Could these magic liquids be plant-based acids that ancients used to cut the perfect building stones and create ancient jewelry? Pendant and ring theorists say maybe. If pito and shamir are ancient names for a strong plant-based acid like hydrochloric acid, then it is a likely explanation for the level of craftsmanship we see at the end of the Stone Age. Could the ancient Egyptians have taught the ancient Bolivians how to distill the acid or vice versa? If they had contact, yes, but it is more likely that both societies crafted similar plant recipes at roughly the same time. History is rife with simultaneous inventions and discoveries. History is also full of questions. Let's keep looking for answers. When you go to the website, you can see the work cited at the bottom of this article. We got our information from a doctoral thesis written by a graduate of the University of Mexico in April 2012, and from an article in an Italian magazine published in 2002. You can get all of the information about those two sources from Pendant and Ring. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up, let's feed the algorithm. Ask any questions or make any comments below. We'll see you next time on Pendant and Ring.